What's been very significant about making it real is that it's been led by people who use services and citizens and they've put a lot of energy and passion into the language that's used. I know what I want. I know, I'm, you know, I'm quite positive there. We really want to own stuff and we really want things to be about us and we want things to be positive. It's about looking at the individual, not just in an office, but looking at them in their own home, in their own environment, managing their care, but also managing their lives. The Markers of Progress are a series of I statements and this has changed the way that we've thought about services because it's making us much more outcome based. Personalisation is what we've been waiting for in this sector. It's incredibly challenging to make real, uh, otherwise you might say it might have happened many years ago. But it feels like now is a really important time to make this happen. I really hope that, uh, that councils, that organisations that provide services will really embrace making it real as a way in which both they as individual places and organisations can check whether they're really making the progress that they want to make. It's a matter of human rights, it's a matter of people having an equal quality of life opportunity and uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer that actually it's the, it's the context, the environment that disables people as much as the disability themselves. We can fix that. For me, it's important that me or the end user has real choice, uh, you know, um, that information is given to, to me to, to know and to inform me to, to have that choice. The information that's provided has to be appropriate to that particular person who's receiving it. Visually impaired, hard of hearing, learning difficulties. Information is not about bits of paper necessarily or things on YouTube. Information is mostly about someone that you would rely on what they can tell you. And that is why, to be truthful, I think that advocacy and self-advocacy are so important here. When I was growing up, I didn't have a social life because not a lot of people were, were um, wanted me as friends. But um, when I started to go to my... Um, Princess Street is a youth club for people with lots of disabilities and um, they were accepting me. I've gained confidence since I've been with um, people first opening doors. My son um, is called Alexander and he's 20 years old and has autism and a learning disability but his absolute passion in life is World War II reenacting. It's his community, they're his people, and he's really happy when he's there. Health and education and social care. I've realised just how important it is that those people work together with the family. I think the real issue is about people working together as a team, so that if a problem occurs, everybody responds promptly. Simon has an annual review and in that review everybody who is relevant to Simon's life is actually there. It's essential that the workforce is taken on board, has a proper knowledge, proper training in order that they can enhance what they provide to their customer. I've been living independently for almost 30 years and uh, I've employed my own people over that whole period of time and it's worked perfectly well to enable me to have a, a good life. I've had the support of people who have been very admirable and very supportive. Without that I wouldn't be the person I am today and I wouldn't be doing the work I'm doing. Chris's safety is paramount obviously but push comes to shove, he's got to have a life as well and he's got to have a life that's enjoyable, otherwise there's not much point. I do feel that it's important that you do allow a certain amount of risk in people's lives just because it's all part of life. Everybody takes risks and you learn from your mistakes. 
you become a better person by the mistakes you make. So I think risk taking is an essential part of somebody's life. Personal health budgets are designed to more accurately target and fill the need for, for services for people and therefore there's less waste. I really believe Hannah having an individual budget and uh, PAs has transformed her life and it's also transformed my life as well. I do think that these markers are actually going to make things easier for all of us in the long run because we've got an agreed framework that we're all working to. I think of the making it real markers as markers for everyone, so not just markers for, for professionals to look at and consider, but most importantly markers for, for those of us who are on the receiving end um, who have aspirations and who want to meet our aspirations but just happen to need some support along the way. I think making it real provides the framework in which you can have clear, um, open conversations about what it is that um, is stopping us um, delivering those, those real markers, the things that people just want to see happen in their life. What's important um, about making it real is that it's been produced by people um, who use services and by family carers and that it's been endorsed by the whole sector. It will influence a lot of what we do because it's supporting community-based support and that's good for us because that's our business, we're supporting communities. It should be reinforced and rather than um, diverted from and so everything we can be thinking of within the sector that's going to be doing that I think will help and give it some sort of traction and purchase. Every section of Making It Real has something to say to home care providers. Obviously there are areas of this which are more directly influenced by home care providers than others, but there is something throughout the document here that will be of value and will help people focus on the things that matter most. So yeah, let's, you know, if we're all together on this, we can make it real. <laughs>